All right, I'm going to do something a little different here, okay? Now, this channel is, you know, mostly about building and flying rubber power models. Uh, here's the Senator, which I kind of feel bad. It's been sitting around like this for about eight months now. I still have to finish it, but I have a lot of planes. And, you know, I like to build slow and enjoy it. That's kind of the whole point. But uh, another scenario is that's easier to say when you've got some planes to fly. I remember when I was a kid... Sometimes there'd be a contest coming and I didn't have planes or they crashed and it was kind of aversive then. You'd be building your brains out, all right, and then it's not that much fun. So what about, uh, you know, this got me thinking maybe a, a, something that's ready to build, all right? So it's really a flying buddy of mine, Tom, uh, showed me this kit. So I'm going to show you that. So this is a kit that you can build really quick, probably an hour and uh, I'm going to show you how to modify it for RC because I can't fly. My field is too small for anything but uh, even peanuts. It's too small, which is a 13-inch span. So I need the RC. Uh, the other thing is I don't really use a stooge anymore. So I'm going to come up with a half tube and I'll show you that as well. Okay, so here's the kit. It's called the Sky Voyager. All right. It's a Chinese okay as you could probably tell and i got this from jnh aerospace they sell it it was 25 dollars. i thought it was a steal for that price and uh it looks like a lot of fun now it's a little it's 25 and a half inch wingspan i usually like to do 30 inch for rc you know to carry the weight but i think this will be okay so i'll just show you the box before i get going on it there's some instructions all right and here's the fuselage look at that there you go it's got a nice tube I moved this back a little bit. It's going to be probably in that position. And uh, that's pretty much ready to go. Just I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. Here's the tail. Boom. This is really, really nice. And you can put the stab and the rudder right on there. It's a little box of supplies and stuff. Now, they give you weights to balance it, but we're not going to do that. We're doing RC. Okay, there's a hook to insert the motor, but I'm not going to use that. And uh, oh, this was impressive. Now there's a prop, a folding prop, and it's got a reverse Montreal stop here. This is incredible. Okay, uh, I can't do it right now. But yeah, the way that works basically here, you can see the rubber pulls it back and that releases. And then this little pin goes in and stops it and then the prop folds. I'll show you that later. There's also a nose cone for that. And then this is some tape I'm not going to use. And then... Here's but the wing stab and rudder and styrofoam ready to go and a little reinforcement bar. It's really, really nice. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to put it together and uh, then we'll get, I'll show you how we're going to put the RC in. I still got to figure that out and then we'll get going. Okay, so the first thing I did is join the two wing halves together. Okay. Now they showed just doing it with tape, which is fine if you're in a rush, but you know, I, I'm not in that much of a rush. So what I did is you can use a good old tight bond on styrofoam. So you can see the sanding block still there. I sanded it and you have to spend a little time doing that to make sure it makes a pretty much a perfect joint. Okay. They have a little gap here. And the other thing that's important is I would put it up against a straight edge. All right. You want to make sure it's nice and flat and perfectly even in the front. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'll put in the top part and uh, they have a reinforcer as well. All right, I'm going to show you what I did with the wing. Okay, so I first I used uh, white glue to do the two halves together as I already showed you. Then I put in, they give you a nice graphite rod there. And the way I did that is I held it here on one end and then I put a nice bead of white glue along it. Okay, and then where my fingers were, I don't want to get glue on my fingers, I put a little glue in there. And then I was able to simply carefully lay it in and I put a little weight, let it dry and there you go. Now the top plastic part, I used 5 minute epoxy. Okay, and then I used these little uh, clothespin clamps, I'll show you how I make those, to hold that on. Alright. Now on the bottom, I was a little worried here that, uh, you know, if the platform kind of dented into the foam, it would wobble. So I put a little 64th ply reinforcer, all right, in three spots instead of just doing the tape there, okay? So it's strong, but also the wing should be sitting nice and secure, and that's important for the rocket climb, all right? Now you also have to put some uh, of these plastic on the stab. You can see I got that sitting here drying. 
And I'll show you how you make the little clothespin clamp. So here's a clothespin. Okay, and what you do is you just take out the spring, turn it around the other way. So now the spring goes there, you see, into the round part, and you turn it over. And this is also going to go into the round part like that. And there you go. And now the spring sits like that. So now you got a little nice little clamp. Okay. Now one thing you got to be careful is here I clamped it on the plastic. But otherwise you, I, you can see I used a little balsa, um, you know, cushion there. Otherwise you're going to dent the foam. And in general with rubber power you got to be careful with this. You don't want to dent the covering or something. So just put a little balsa cushioner there and then you'll be fine. All right. Um, I used to steal these from my mother when I was a kid. I needed more clamps. I'd steal them from the clothesline. She wasn't always happy about that, but it makes a nice little clamp. Okay, so we're going to get to the fuselage and I'll show you how I'm going to do the equipment and we're almost done. All right, so we got, uh, you know, the wing done and the stab there. We got these little pieces we had to glue on. And now I'm going to show you the fuselage, all right? So the first thing I did is I put in the tail, boom, and here it is. And uh, you have to make sure it lines up with the hole there, of course, all right? Now the other thing is you only have a little itsy bitsy of wiggle room. But what I did is I put five minute epoxy in and I put it in there. And then, you know, you can make just to make sure it's aligned. It's nice and straight. So I have a nice big ruler both this way and that way. You have to make sure it's really, really nice and straight. Okay, and that's what I did. Now it turns out that to modify it for the RC is going to be really easy. All I had to do is this is a 64th inch piece of ply and I made it so that the servo just fits in there and then I'm going to glue the receiver there and we'll figure out about the battery yet. Okay. Now the other change I made is I made the mount bigger as you can see. So what I did is I epoxied some 64th ply on the bottom here and then on the top I put a little 30 second fill in padding so it's nice and flat. And that's important because, you know, as I said, I, you know, I like to really rocket it up there. And you can see now with my little platform in the front and this goes on like that. I mean, there's no way this wing is wiggling or anything. It's, it's on there very solid and that's very, very important. Okay. So there isn't much else to do. Now I slid this for the stab and then I hit it with a little bit of thin CA to put it in place. I'm going to get the rudder ready. I have to slot the rudder. So that's next and uh, put the equipment in and we're ready to go. Okay, so here's how I did the equipment. Now you can see the servo just slipped right in there and then I just put some five minute epoxy here and there, okay, to hold it in. Uh, the receiver just almost looks like it was made to go in there. So I just put, a, so again, five minute epoxy on the back of that and put that in, okay. The battery I just decided to do really simple. I just put a rubber band on, as you can see, and uh, slipped in the battery. So then when I'm ready to fly, just plug it in. We're ready to go. Okay. Now, um, the only thing I'd say here is you should really use five minute epoxy for the servo. And the reason why is because the servos get broken. I've hit trees and poles, you know, a receiver is never broken, but the servos break. And with the five minute epoxy, you can kind of cut it a little and get it out. And actually it's, it's kind of rubbery. And that's another thing, uh, since it's rubbery, it's impact resistant, okay? CA is very brittle. You don't want to use that unless it's rubberized. Like here's one, I believe, is this one? No, this one isn't. I thought this, so the Loctite makes one that says impact resistant and it's rubberized. And that's the one, but again, I would emphasize not to use that because it's impossible to get the servo out. With the five minute uh, epoxy, you can peel it out and and actually peel it off and it kind of make it look like new again. I've done it many, many times in my coops this way, okay? Now, the other thing I'll show you here is the uh, rudder. Let's see, maybe I can just pivot that a little bit. And uh, basically what I did is I put a little, this is just a 30 second ply, made a little control horn and I just epoxied that on and a little reinforce on the bottom. I epoxy this in right here, okay? You can see the hinge. All right, uh, now to keep the, all I did with the wire, it's super low tech. I just bent a hook and then you slip it on. Okay, it can't come off now. And I bent it here. And then what I do is I just take a little thread, whoops. Uh, I take a little bit of thread and I tie that and hit it with a little CA and that keeps the wire from coming out. So this works really, really nice, okay? So I'll get the receiver and turn it on. 
So I've got a couple other things to show you. All right, the prop I decided, you know what, I'm not going to use any bobbins. So I just, I'm just going to, you know, let out a few wines and put it on the hook. I've tried it a bit. Uh, oh yeah, for the push rod, I just ended up using a 30 second wire. You can use graphite or something else, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, that much. It's a little bit heavier. And actually, the total weight of the plane, completely assembled, including the rubber bands, was exactly 40 grams. Okay, so that's really, really nice. And in fact, they actually give you 6 grams of weight because I believe for this P1B, it's supposed to weigh 40 grams. But why put on 6 grams of dead weight when you can put on RC and uh, go fly in your local park? All right. So let me turn it on and I'll show you the rudder and then we're ready to go. All right, the Sky Voyager, we're done, pretty much ready to go, okay? Only took a few hours to do the whole thing and you know, you don't even have to do most of my little picky you and modifications if you don't want, just do a few of the basics. Like I would extend the pylon and put on the equipment, okay? Now one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that uh, to hinge the rudder I just used 0.2 millimeter thick mylar but to be honest with you you don't even need that you could probably just scotch tape it on both sides and that'll be fine okay so i have the uh, transmitter on here let me show you so here's the rudder there you go and you got you know about a half inch throw on each side okay so it's fine now it bends a little bit when it's pushing it but it doesn't matter it's, it should be enough uh, but if you want, what you could do is you could put the servo wire so it's on this side since I usually only make right turns and then it'll be pulling for the right turn and not pushing. And if it's a problem, I'll change it that way. But from what I know, this should be plenty to keep turning and keep it in the field. Okay. So the last thing I did is I made a half tube. Okay. Because I'm not really winding on the plane and here it is. Not the neatest. I just did it quick. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little piece of tubing goes on the back. I tried this, and that's what you wind it to. Let me, here I have it. So you, you know, you wind it like that. You slip this on the motor. I'll show you out in the field. You slide it in, and then you slide the peg through. And then you can pull out the tube. The plastic was a little bit of a problem, so I'm just going to use aluminum tubing instead. Okay? Alright, so it might be a little while, but we're going to try to get out and do some flying. And we'll show you how that goes. Alright, so two last things I want to show you. They're probably the most important things. So one is, after I finished the model, I got it completely assembled here. Okay, and then what I did is I found the center of gravity and I marked it. Alright, <clears throat> by uh, just hanging it from a thread. Okay, and seeing where it balances. And this is with the motor in and everything else. And uh, then I located the wing, this, the mountings. I like to have the pretty far back CG. So I put it at 65%. So it was 65% of the wing cord back. Okay, and that's important. Now the other thing, and it's related to that, is when I looked at it, I noticed that the wing incidence is way too high. Okay? Uh, the problem with that is under full power, you're going to end up doing a loop. So you can't do these rocket climbs like I do. So part of the secret is you have a far back center of gravity and you really got to lower the incidence, all right? Anytime I see it's more than 2 or 3%, I lower it right away. And if you watch my Keelcraft Ace video, it's the same problem. There's too much incidence and I lowered it and it flies beautifully. So here all I did is I glued, it's a little bigger than an eighth inch, it's about a 3 16th inch shim in the back to lower the wing incidence, okay? And, uh, you know, I can sand it down. If that's too much, I can sand it down a little bit at the field, but that's going to be important. All right, the final thing I did is, on the front, I originally thought I could just slip the motor on, but it's just way too, you know, difficult to handle a lubed motor. So I'm using one of the bobbins, and this is, you'll see these in a lot of my videos. Uh, these are uh, coupe bobbins, basically. And all I did here is I took off the plastic and I just bent it so it fit in the bobbin. All right, so this way it makes it easy to wind outside the plane with the have to. All right, we're going to get it to the field and get flying. <laughs> 